control the most advanced starfighters and skilled pilots in the galaxy. In the Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures game, you will command a group of merciless Imperial or daring rebel pilots in furious ship-to-ship -ship space combat. Take control of TIE Fighters, X-Wings and other ships from the Star Wars universe and pit them against each other in thrilling tactical battles. Win by eliminating all of your opponent's ships or complete the objectives in one of X-Wing's pre-generated missions. The X-Wing core set includes all the components necessary for two players to get started, as well as several missions offering unique victory conditions. X-Wing is played over a series of rounds, each consisting of four phases, the planning phase, activation phase, combat phase, and end phase. In this two-player example, both players have moved their ships into attack range and are preparing to begin a new round. The Rebel player commands Luke Skywalker's T-65 X-Wing fighter, which has been equipped with proton torpedoes and an R2 unit. The Imperial player commands two TIE fighters piloted by Night Beast in a standard TIE fighter and Mauler Mithil, who has an upgrade in marksmanship. Upgrade cards represent enhancements that players can purchase for their ships, such as astromechs, elite talents, or secondary weapons. A new round begins with the planning phase. Each player simultaneously chooses one maneuver for each of his ships by rotating the ship's maneuver dial to the desired maneuver. Then, keeping the selection secret from the opponent, the maneuver dial is placed face down next to its ship. Note that each ship type has a unique selection of maneuver choices reflecting its physical capabilities and restraints. The agile TIE fighter, for example, can make sharp and sudden turns, while the more heavily armored X-Wing cannot. After all ships have been assigned maneuvers, play proceeds to the activation phase. Each ship now moves one at a time in order of pilot skill. Players refer to the pilot skill number on their ship cards or corresponding ship token and then begin activating maneuvers, starting with the lowest pilot skill. Night Beast, with a pilot skill of 5, goes first. Night Beast turns his dial face up, revealing a bank left maneuver with a speed of 3. The Imperial player then takes the corresponding maneuver template and places it between the front guides on the ship's base. Then, he advances Night Beast's TIE Fighter to the opposite end of the template. During its activation, each ship has the opportunity to perform one of the actions indicated on its corresponding ship card. Actions add additional tactical layers to combat. Night Beast, having executed his maneuver, may now perform any action printed on his ship card. The Imperial player decides that Night Beast will perform an evade action, allowing him to cancel one hit rolled by an enemy attacker during the combat phase. The Imperial player places an evade token next to Night Beast's ship. Mola Mithil has the second lowest pilot skill of seven, so he activates next. The Imperial player reveals a Koyagran turn maneuver with a speed of three. The Koyagran turn is a difficult maneuver, indicated by a red arrow on the maneuver dial. The Imperial player moves his ship along the path of the maneuver template and then rotates the ship 180 degrees so that it is now facing the opposite direction. After a ship executes a red maneuver, a stress token is placed near the ship. Ships with stress tokens cannot perform actions or execute difficult maneuvers until the stress token is removed. Luke Skywalker, with a pilot skill of 8, activates last. Luke has one stress token from a previous round, which can only be removed by performing a green maneuver. The Rebel player has chosen to perform a straight green maneuver with a speed of 2. Luke's X-Wing follows the path of the corresponding template and then immediately removes one stress token from his ship. With the stress token removed, Luke can now perform an action. The Rebel player chooses a focus action and places a focus token next to Luke's ship. Focus increases a ship's chance of hitting when attacking or decreases its chance of getting hit when defending. After players have activated all of their ships, play proceeds to the combat phase. During the combat phase, each ship may perform an attack against one enemy ship within its firing arc and range. 
Turn order during combat is once again dictated by pilot skill, but now proceeds from highest to lowest. In this example, Luke Skywalker has the highest pilot skill, so he attacks first. At the front of each ship token is an area indicating the ship's firing arc. An enemy ship is considered to be inside the firing arc if any part of the enemy ship's base falls inside of this arc. If the enemy ship is inside the firing arc, the player then notes the range. In this example, Night Beast is outside of Luke Skywalker's firing arc, but Mauler Mythal is within it. Range is measured using the range ruler, which is divided into three sections. Primary weapon attacks made at range 1 provide a bonus to the attacker, while those attacks made at range 3 provide a bonus to the defender. Further, some weapons or abilities may provide bonuses or restrictions based on the attacking range. In this example, Luke Skywalker is attacking Mauler Mythal at range 2, which gives no attack or defense bonus. After the attacking ship has determined any range bonuses, the attacking player rolls his attack dice. The red number printed on the ship card is that ship's primary weapon value, which indicates the number of dice the attacker rolls during his attack. Luke Skywalker has a primary weapon value of 3, indicating that the Rebel player will roll 3 attack dice for Luke's X-Wing. The Rebel player rolls 1 hit result, 1 critical hit result, and 1 focus result. During the activation phase, the Rebel player placed a focus token near Luke Skywalker. This token allows Luke to change his focus result to a hit result. The Imperial player now rolls his defense dice to see if he will take any damage from the attack. The green number printed on the ship card is that ship's agility value and indicates the number of defense dice it will roll. Mauler Mythal has an agility value of 3, so the Imperial player rolls 3 defense dice. He obtains 1 evade and 2 blank results. After rolling all attack and defense dice, the players compare their results to determine whether the defending ship was hit. Luke Skywalker rolled two hit results and one critical hit result, and Mauler Mythal rolled one evade result. The evade result cancels one of the hit results, resulting in one regular hit and one critical hit against Mauler Mythal. To resolve the regular hit, the Imperial player draws one damage card and places it face down next to Mauler Mythal's ship card. To resolve the critical hit, the Imperial player draws one damage card and places it face up next to the ship card, reading the text on the card aloud. In this example, Mauler Mythal has suffered a damaged cockpit and his pilot skill will be lowered starting in the next round. When the total number of damage cards assigned to a ship equals or exceeds its hull value, that ship is destroyed. Since his ship's hull value is 3, Mauler Mythal survives Luke's attack the damage card remains with the affected ship. Mauler Mythal has the second highest pilot skill, 7, and attacks next. Luke Skywalker falls inside Mauler Mythal's firing arc and is at range 2, which gives no attack or defense bonuses. The Imperial player rolls two attack dice, the number indicated by the primary weapon value printed on his ship card. The Imperial player rolls two hit results. The Rebel player now rolls his defense dice for Luke Skywalker. Luke's agility value is 2, so he rolls 2 defense dice. The Rebel player rolls 1 blank result and 1 evade result. Luke's X-Wing suffers 1 hit. Because X-Wings are equipped with deflector shields, the hit result removes 1 shield token instead of damaging the hull. After a ship's shields have been depleted, damage to that ship is recorded using damage cards as normal. The last ship to perform an attack is Night Beast, who has the lowest pilot skill of 5. Since there are no enemy ships inside his firing arc, Night Beast is unable to perform an attack this round. After resolving all combat, the end phase occurs. Players remove all evade and focus tokens assigned to ships, and the round ends. If neither player has destroyed all of his opponent's ships or fulfilled the victory conditions of a mission, a new round begins, starting with a new planning phase. Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures game is fast, fun, and ready to play right out of the box. As players become more familiar with the game, 
They may wish to begin building their own custom squadrons with unique pilots, upgrades, and additional ships. In addition to those found in the X-Wing Miniatures game core set, additional ships are available in several X-Wing expansions. The X-Wing game experience can vary from small skirmishes to massive battles. To balance opposing sides, each ship and upgrade card has a designated squad point cost in its lower right corner. Before playing, players must agree on a squad point total for the game. Players then customize their force within that squad point total. Each ship's upgrade capabilities are limited to those shown in the upgrade bar, located at the bottom of each ship card. A ship may equip one upgrade per icon. Big's Darklighter, for example, may equip two upgrades one Proton Torpedoes upgrade, and one Astromech upgrade. As an example of a 60-point game, the Rebel player chooses to field Biggs Darklighter, who costs 25 points. Then he chooses to equip the X-Wing with Proton Torpedoes, costing 4 points, and R2-D2, costing another 4 points, for a total of 33 squad points. The Rebel player then adds a Red Squadron pilot to his squadron, costing 23 points, and upgrades that ship with Proton Torpedoes, costing 4 points and bringing the Red Squadron pilot to a squad point cost of 27. The final Rebel Squadron with Biggs Darklighter, Red Squadron pilot and their upgrades come to a total of 60 squad points. The Rebel player is ready to take on the Empire. Star Wars X-Wing Miniatures Game Take control of a rebel fleet and restore the ideals of the Republic or lead the Galactic Empire to ultimate victory by blasting the rebel scum from the stars. Stay on target and decide the fate of the galaxy.